Hi there, welcome to the Player YouTube channel. The channel where, amongst other things, we do car reviews, but not any old car reviews. No, we don't include the scratchy plastics and we don't include how many bottles I can fit in my door bin. We tell you exactly how it is, how it is straight, what this car is really like. So you can evaluate for yourself if you want to go down and have a test drive of the car that we're reviewing. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, saving you time and hopefully saving you a bit of money as well. I'm AJ and the car I'm driving today is the all-electric supercar from Audi, also known as the e-tron, says it there. This is the e-tron GT. It's a bit of a head turner. It's rather expensive and trust me, it's gonna get your pulse racing in pretty much every curve. Sounds a bit like an ex-girlfriend. Um, better not start talking about her. That's another story. Anyway, back down to earth. Does it cut the mustard with the competition? The likes of the Tesla Model S, the Porsche Taycan, to name but a few. Well, we need to find out. The only way we're going to do that is to get this car back to Player HQ, have a look around it, discuss the various options, and give you our straight up opinion of the Audi e-tron GT. You've got to admit, guys, what a good looking car. It is absolutely stunning. I've been driving this for just over a week now and everywhere I've gone, it's turned heads. People have come over, they've you know, asked me about the car, said how lovely it looks, they love the color, things like that. Um, I've got to be honest with you, I think it is just one of those cars. It's, it's almost iconic and I think it's gonna be around for a number of years and people are always gonna to refer to this as Audi's first foray into the electric supercar area. Anyway, enough of talking about that. This car was actually developed back in 2018. Yeah, it was quite a while ago. And it didn't hit the streets until March 2021. It took quite a number of years to hone it and get it to what you see here today. There's a couple of different models. You've got the GT, which is what this car is, and you've got a GTRS. Now, the GT is very fast and very nimble, but the GTRS is a completely different animal. It's got a lot more brake horsepower and it's a lot quicker off the line, trust me. The only visual differences really are the front on the RS, this panel here is jet black and that's how you can differentiate between the GT and the GTRS, it's primarily the only thing. Um, while I'm down here, said the bishop to the actress, this panel here, you can have that in the color of your choice if you want because it's, um, yeah, because, there you go. I quite like it in that gray, but you can match it up to this color or you can have it black as well, whichever you want, but you will pay extra for that. Speaking of paying extra in colors, this beautiful Kimura gray is part of the metallics. There are eight metallic colors. Each one of them will cost you an extra 950 pounds. However, if you like white, then you can get that as part of the package price. So I pretty much know what I'd do. I think I'd have it in white and then I'd go out and get it wrapped in the color of my choice, or maybe a design of my choice. And it's not really gonna cost, it's gonna cost a bit more, but that's what I'd do. And then you're completely, totally unique. This car was designed and built on the, on Volkswagen's J1 platform. Now, if you know anything about your cars, you know that is also the Porsche Taycan platform as well. However, this is nothing like the Porsche Taycan. Underneath, yes, it's built on the same platform, but above, and it doesn't drive any, anything like it. I've driven the Taycan, and it's, uh, it's nothing like driving this car. So that's just a little bit of useless information for you there. Price-wise, well, there's two different models. You've got the RS, the GT RS, and you've got the GT. The GT entry price is around about 82,000 UK pounds for your entry-level car, which is called the Standard. That's, that's the entry-level car. There's a Standard, there's a Vorsprung, there's a Carbon Black, and then there is a Carbon Vorsprung, which is your top of the range. Um, this particular car here, with the extra packs and the bits and pieces, comes out at around 105,000 UK pounds. Now, if you want to go for the RS, you will be paying upwards, entry-level price, of 135,000 UK pounds. So, at the end of the day, if you've got money to burn, a bit of a no-brainer, go for the RS, if I'm honest with you. It's got so much silly brake horsepower, it's great. Um, you get a couple of rim choices, 20s and 21 inch. This one's got the 21s on it. They look really nice. I think it just all 21s do fit really nicely on this car. Um, you get a couple of steering wheel choices. Yes, two different steering wheel choices. There are four different leather choices for the interior on color as well which is again, really nice. If you don't want to ride around on a cow, there is a leather free choice as well. So plenty of options with this car. Let's carry on. 
Both the GT and the GT RS get a 93 kilowatt battery. As I said earlier, there's a distinct difference in the power though. With the GT, you get 523 brake horsepower. 0 to 60 time, a very respectable 4.1 seconds with a top speed electronically limited to 152 miles an hour. I hear you say that's not bad, AJ. However, the RS, the GT RS, gets 637 brake horsepower, a 0 to 60 of 3.3 seconds, and a top speed electronically limited to 155 miles an hour. Simply spectacular for a car that weighs in at two and a half tons. Let's check out under the bonnet, and the actual bonnet release catch is built into the door, would you believe, not in the usual position, so you have to push it down there. It's electronic release, it's very easy to use. If you actually want to open the front here, centre in the middle there, you push to the right, there's a lever, and let the gas struts do the work. There you go. There's around 60 litres of space, I'm guessing. Um, it's big enough to get an overnight bag in there or one of those carry-on bags. You've got your warning triangle here, there's your washer fluid filler there as well, nice and easy if you're topping that up. Um, underneath here, well, you've got the unfortunate um, latex uh, liquid that you use for the puncture repair kit. You get a couple of tools in there, and on the other side, you've got one of those pumps that plugs, you know, plugs into your 12-volt adapter. To be honest, they are completely useless, complete waste of space. Throw them away, get yourself some run flats, because this car, you cannot get a space saver in because of the battery. There isn't anywhere to put it. Um, at the moment, I've got the two charging cables that you get with this car in the boot. Um, Preferably, I think they would be better under the bonnet here because they're out of the way. Um, you get two charging cables, as I said. You get the one that you can plug in at home um, and you also get the one that you can use out on the road if when you get to a service station they don't have a cable. So you're pretty much covered all around there. There are two charging ports with the e-tron, which is really good when you're pulling into a service station. No messing around either side. Um, very easy to open as well. Just pop it open like that. Um, when you want to release your cable after it's charged, you just pull it, you just push the button there and pull it straight out. And it's all nice and waterproof and tucks away nice and neatly as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about costs and times it takes to charge. So cost-wise, if you're on a home charge, so in other words, you're using the one that just plugs into the wall when you're at home, it will take around 13 and a half hours to fully charge this car. Cost-wise, we've been using a company called Octopus Energy on their dual tariff here in the UK. During the day, if you're charging the car at home, it will cost you 13 pence per kilowatt. At night, on the dual tariff, it drops to five pence per kilowatt. So I know what I'd be doing, I'd be popping this on charge overnight, and then in the morning, just pop it off again and you're done. And at five pence a kilowatt, that's a very, very cheap way of running your car. However, where it gets a bit more expensive is when you get out on the road and you've got to go into a filling station, and that's using the BP contactless pricing system, which is what we've done, for the standard charging on this car will cost around about 40 pence per kilowatt. And it will take around about 40 minutes to charge from zero to full. Um, that's, you know, on 100, 100 kilowatt. If you jump up to the 150 kilowatt, it gets a bit faster, but a little bit more expensive. It's around about 50 pence per kilowatt. Now, this car will also take the 270 kilowatt superchargers that are now becoming available. Don't know what the costs are on those, but either way, if it was 50p for the 150, it's going to be going up in price anyway. So it can get a little bit pricey when you're out on the road with one of these. Um, home, charges, home chargers and home charging systems. We've been very lucky here in the UK. The government have given us a grant up until now of 350 UK pounds towards it. Now, when you're spending five to 800 pounds on a seven kilowatt home charger, that's quite a handy little grant that they're giving. Unfortunately, they're ceasing to do that as of the 31st of March this year, which well, actually the end of April, but you have to register your interest and your electric car to get that by the 31st of March 2022, just to let you know. Um, failing that, well, there is the option to buy yourself a brand new house because apparently as of 2022, any new house that's built has to come with a home charging system, a home charging port outside somewhere. Yeah. I think the 350 grant would have been better. Having to go out and buy a house is quite an expensive way of getting yourself a home charger. Round at the back, again, absolutely stunning. Look at the shape, look at the design, look at the way all the lines are just so perfect and tight on it. 
It's just really, really beautiful, this car. I love the way the LED lights wrap all the way around and they do go all the way across there as well. You've got your e-tron GT badge here as well. And look at this aero down here. It's just so nice. I mean, it really does want those big fat exhausts, doesn't it? But they're not gonna be here, obviously, are they? Um, electronically assisted boot lift on this as well. Oh, by the way, you get the nice privacy glass and also there's an aero piece here that pops up to give you a little bit more downforce at high speed. Um, yeah, so electronically assisted, there you go. Really quick as well, 405 litres. So equivalent of probably a couple of large suitcases and a couple of carry-on bags as well. Plenty of room in here, plenty of room to manoeuvre, so to speak. But one thing I do love in here as well is the fact that inside you've got these bits cut out so you can get your golf clubs in there and they'll go straight across there. You don't even need to take your long ones out. You just put them straight in there. There's some underfloor storage as well, which is hidden neatly away in there. You can tuck your knickknacks and bits that you don't want floating around all over the place. There's a 12 volt adapter in there. You've got some tie offs there. And at the moment we've got the electronic cables in the back here, just for the time being. There's a scuff guard along the back here. And all in all, I just think it's a, it's a very, very practical supercar. Before I jump in the back and show you what it's like for the passengers, check out, it's got some really nice Alcantara across the centre here. The premium quality finish on this is, is throughout the whole car. Uh, you've got the privacy glass at the back here, very, very small windows, and they don't go all the way down. They only go to about here, which isn't a good thing. However, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's just the way the nature of the game these days. Very small aperture here, really small, getting in and out of here. I think primarily this is going to be more designed for younger kids, but Let's see what it's like for the adults. I can get in and out. You've just got to mind your head as you get in. But once you're in, there's a lot of headroom in here because of this massive panoramic roof, which comes as standard with all of the e-trons. Um, you, you do tend to feel it's a lot higher than what it really is, but it is a very small opening there. You've got a little coat hanger up there. You've got a courtesy light up there and a grab handle and another coat hanger behind it there, which is good. I like the way the seats have been cut out. They give you a bit more knee room. This is in my normal driving position. Very high seat, so visibility in the back for the passengers isn't that good. Um, but one thing that really is good is the fact that you get completely independent rear heating. So you can set that yourselves for whatever temperature you want. You also get heated rear seats, which is lovely. And you've got independent air vents here. You can turn them on and off and direct them wherever you want to go. Now, here is something that I'm, I'm really shocked at. There's nothing to charge at the back here. There's no USB ports. I would have expected at least a couple of USB ports. I think that is a major faux pas on Audi's behalf there, because you've especially got two people in the back here. This is a GT. You're supposed to be doing a few hundred miles between, you know, on a journey. You're going to need to plug stuff in. Um, another thing which I hate are the uh, Isofix points that are the pulley out your covers. These are going to get lost or they could end up in the child's mouth or they're going to get broken. And you're going to end up having to buy a set of these when you come to park with the car again. They're probably not cheap either. So, you know, we could do with the ones on the springs that pop in and out. Um, recessed seat belts, we like that. We love the finish on this car. The leather interior at the back here is simply superb. You get a central armrest here, which I'll pull down, double cup holder in there. It's all really nice and comfortable. And above all, I think, yeah, I could sit here for, you know, a couple of hours on a long journey. One thing I did notice, I was quite shocked. I wasn't expecting a transmission tunnel because being an electric car, but there is a transmission tunnel in here. It's, it's quite a high one as well. So that came as a bit of a shock to me. I thought it'd be completely flat, but nevertheless, you're not going to be really sat in the middle here. There's only two seats in the back here. All in all, though, it's very, very comfortable and um, very airy. I think that's the main thing. Let's get around the front, see what it's like for the driver. So here we are up front in the driving position. What a wonderful position it is. Um, these seats, absolutely superb. Well bolstered, really comfortable, lovely lumbar support. They're fully electronically adjustable down here on the right hand side. You can get it in just the right position. Likewise, your steering is fully electrical adjustable down here. There's a little button around there. I love the steering wheel. As I mentioned earlier, two choices in your steering wheel. This particular one is extremely nice. I love the shape of it and I love the piano black bits and the leather, really nice. It's a heated steering wheel and the button for that is just there on the right hand side of the steering wheel. We'll start on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, as I've just mentioned that. So you've got your telephone control on there. So you activate your telephone there. You've got your Ask, ask um, Audi button on there. So you can push that and it will come up and you can say, take me to the nearest burger bar or take me down to so-and-so, so-and-so, or the nearest library or whatever you need. You push that and 
nine times out of ten, it'll probably query with you. Um, it doesn't always work first time, uh, but it will get there in the end. Volume button just below that and left and right media scroll buttons on there. Don't forget you've got Android mirroring on here, you've got Apple Play and you've got Bluetooth. So if you're in your tunes and you're just whizzing through there, you can scroll up and down. It will also come up on your cluster here. You've got a 12-inch cluster, digital cluster. We'll talk about that in a second. Left-hand side of the wheel here, this is your left and right button control for your cluster. So once you go into the view, you can change the view on here by minimalizing your tachymeter and your speedo, or you can have it larger and then it's just a smaller display in the middle. What I love about this is once you go, you minimalize it and you go into the map mode, it will spread right across the screen, which I think is just stunning. I've always loved the Audi infotainment system and I love the cockpit as well. It's just beautifully set up. You've got temperature down there, sign recognition, um, pop that back up again and you, I like it in the larger view there. Um, to the left, you've got a little NOAA button that moves up and down and depending on what you've picked there. So if you actually picked the trip computer, you can go uh, up and down using the scroll button and it will give you the various bits and pieces, tire pressures, distance control, things like that. And then as soon as you scroll across, so we can go to radio and things like that, you can just set that all up. And once again, when you're driving, you don't even need to look at that. You just look straight down, you're looking straight ahead. Nice heads up display. We mentioned that when we're out on the road as well. That works really nicely and it's just set in the perfect position. Flappy paddles are for your regen. There are no gears in this car, you know that. Um, regen, I go into that more later on when we get out on the road. So that's you know enough to tell you at the moment. Right hand side is your wiper stick. Left hand side is your lighting stick. At the end of the lighting stick is a button which turns your lane keepy on and off, just to let you know, because that can become annoying sometimes if you're on B rows and you want to give it a little bit and cross over the white lines. Down to the bottom here, cruise control and speed limiter. Again, so easy to use. Click that on and off. You'll soon get the gist of that. You won't even be looking down at that and you'll just be driving along, click it straight in and away you go. Just pop it up and very similar to the Mercedes one, that one. I will mention that. To the right hand side is your lighting panel. I'll leave mine in auto. These are all haptic, so you get a little bit of feedback from them. To the left of that, you do have the fog lights front and rear, so you can just set those. Over here on the door, all your typical door bits, you've got your front and rear mirrors, you've got your memory seating, you've got your, um, say front and rear mirrors, front and rear windows, front mirrors, door mirrors is on there. And down the bottom there, just to the bottom, you can undo the boot at the back, which is great. So if your wife is coming out, same as we've got all the shopping, well, supermarket, wherever you shop, uh, she's coming out and it's pouring rain and you've got your phone on watching YouTube, maybe catching up with the footy, you don't even need to get out of the car. You can just pull that button and she can load the shopping up and you can stay nice and dry and warm while you're watching the footy. That's what we like, little buttons like that. In the centre here, well, there's something rather amazing in this car. It doesn't exist on UK spec cars but I did want to point it out because I haven't seen this for so many years it's an ashtray anyone know what an ashtray is yes back in the days of smoking we used to have these in cars and you could flick your ash in there while you were driving along this must be the German model because they come as an ashtray and they also come with would you believe in here that is a real cigarette lighter or cigar lighter. Um, you actually push that in, that gets really hot, so don't touch it. <laughs> Mind you, you're not going to get one of these. It's really unusual. They're an extra 60 pounds for that ashtray and that. So just goes to show, you know, maybe give up smoking, save yourself 60 quid. Tiny little cubby in there. You do get the, there's a, two USB-C's in there. There's the adapter in there. Don't forget in a few years time, we're all going to be USB-C anyway. So we have hundreds and hundreds of adapters everywhere. Pop that back down. Um, double, it, oh, it's got caught there. There we go. So all these things happen when I'm all on my own. Okay, so we've got a double cup holder. Unfortunately, uh, one of them's being used with the ashtray, but I'll pop it in there. Got another little bit here where you can put bits and pieces like change. Another thing I love, it's so 90s in this car and it's really cool. Do you remember the old, um, uh, what they called iPods I think it was an iPod with the headphones and stuff and it had like a, a little scroll button the touch sensitive this has got it it's absolutely incredible I love it you just turn your finger around it's touch sensitive and your volume comes up watch this ready Ooh, and that brings me nicely on to the fact that this car does have the upgraded sound system. So standard, you normally get the Audi sound, which is a 10 speaker system. This has the Bang & Olufsen system. Oh, wow, what a lovely sound in this car. Really love it. Um, you've got your 10 inch or just over 10 inch TFT main screen here in the middle. Uh, you've got your radio on there, your phone apps, you've got your car, you've got all bits and pieces. So easy to scroll, really quick, ever so easy to set up. I'm not going to go all into that today, guys, because basically it's just, it's so, it really is that easy. You touch it and it does what it says on the tin. Below that, what I really love, so in the um, e-tron 
the SUV version of that, you get a separate screen down here. I was half expecting to get the two screens again, but no, what they've done, and that separate screen, by the way, is for the heating controls. And again, it's all touch sensitive. And I really hate, I love, I do love a knob. You know, I love a knob. Okay, so there's no knobs in here, but I've got some buttons and at least it's separate. So if I've got my gloves on, I haven't got to take them off. And you know, if my hands are wet, for example, it doesn't always work the way you want it to, but here it will do because you've got your separate heating control system. Now I've put it on normally in order to increase a little bit of range up there, I turn it off, but I put it on for filming just to show you. So you set that up and you've got a little auto button there. I'm not gonna push that because it'll suddenly blow the air out. You've got separate his and hers or his and his or hers and hers, whichever way you want it, uh, heated front seats. And during the summer, I'll push that one, you've got cooled seats as well, really nice. So they blow, oh, it started to blow cool air right between your legs there, very nice indeed. Um, down below here, a couple of extra buttons is your camera buttons, your parking, you've got a self park system on this car as well, which are, or park assist system. Um, and to your left here, this is your, uh, what's the name, um, what's the name? Drive Select, Audi Drive Select, must get my words out. <laughs> <laughs> the what's the name button, I love it. This is your what's the name button. Okay, it's Audi Drive Select. You've got efficiency, you've got comfort, you've got dynamic and you've got individual. If you go into the individual, it will allow you to set the car up how you want it. So you can set up with a, a more sporty steering, maybe more comfortable suspension. I love that, very easy again to use and minimal. So you haven't got loads and loads of buttons to go through, loads of different, you know. Uh, that's, that's the one thing I like about this car. It's kept it simple. Let's have a look in the glove box. Um, it's quite a large book again. You always get these owner's manuals. Um, I really wish we could get rid of these because I think it'd be, you know, it's, it's a way of saving money, saving the planet, saving trees, all that printing, all that paper, all that ink, all of that could be saved. And all this, you know, it's all got to be made, all must be costing money. How often do we use the owner's manual? Very, I don't think I've ever looked at my owner's manual with my car, never have. I go online if I want to know how to change a fuse or want to do something with the car, um, or you know, just go to YouTube, that's, that's the way to do it. Um, and I'm saying that obviously for a reason. It's not a massive uh, glove box. You would get a few bits and pieces in there. Um, center here is your drive select, obviously very simple. You've got forward, reverse and neutral. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Your park button's there and the on off button is there. So obviously you have to switch it on. Um, I've got to say, personally sitting in this car, it's beautifully appointed. Look at all the carbon across here. I mean, it's just, yeah, I love it. And all the uh, Alcantara again down here. It's just lovely the way it's all done. I can't wait to get it on the road. So without further ado and me waffling on anymore, let's get it out on the road and give you our opinion of this car, what it's like to drive. The first thing you are going to notice when you get the e-tron gt out on the road is the hum from the battery it's a real sort of deep hum it takes a little bit of getting used to but now i'm used to it i quite like it it's almost like a, a sexy hum if you like that's the only way i could describe that driving this car is incredible and that's putting it very very mildly as an understatement you point it in the direction you want to go and it does exactly what it's told. The Quattro all-wheel drive system is superb. The, you know, the adaptive air suspension is incredible. It's, it's all sort of adds up. You get this lovely driving position and you know, the way the steering's set up and then you've got obviously this beautiful field of vision with a massive windscreen ahead of you. All in all, the only way I can really describe being behind the wheel of the Audi e-tron GT if you could ride an Exocet missile that's got adaptive air suspension and you know all wheel drive, that's what it would be like because you could just steer it where you want to go and it's going to go. This car gives you a confidence, it's almost a superiority over other cars, knowing that one, you can completely accelerate them. There aren't many other cars on the road that can keep up with this car. And at the same time, you've got that lovely confidence of sitting in this car, knowing that all the safety systems are working in your favor and keeping you safe and on the road. So 
So as you would expect, the e-tron GT gets pretty much all the safety systems. Um, you've got blind spot mirrors, you've got autonomous braking in town, you've got lane keepy, lane departure, you've got a decent heads up display, you've got speed limiter on it as well, cruise control, distance control, it's pretty much all there. You're going to feel you know, pretty confident when you come to drive this car. because that is obviously one of the most important things when you buy an electric car. Uh, the range on this car, Audi quote as 298 miles. Well, if you work out the math on this, it's quite simple to do. Um, I will click over to our current reading. We're getting around three miles to the kilowatt. So that would mean the number of kilowatts that we can store in here, real world range would be about 230 miles between fill ups, between putting in your electricity. Um, it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's never gonna be as good as the Tesla Model S because that is the leader in its field. It gets a real world range of around about 400 miles, but you can almost forgive this car for not having the best range in the world because of all the other safety features, the sheer comfort and the build quality from the Audi product. Um, one thing you should be aware of, the best way of getting the range out of this car or increasing that range over a period of time is to actually use a manual regen on this car. There is an auto setting. If you go into the car, go into efficiency settings and set it into a manual mode, it's very easy to do. Once you get into the manual mode, you use the flappy paddles to increase or decrease the regen. If you're not aware of regen, which most people are, a very quick explanation. Regen is basically kinetic energy recovery system. It's like a KERS system. Started in Formula One cars many years ago. It's now used pretty much on every single electric car. And basically what happens is when you're coasting, it will recover energy. And when you're braking, it will recover energy. The only problem is if you're on a motorway, you are generally doing neither of those things. So you tend to burn up more energy than when you are around town, which is almost the complete opposite to a diesel or petrol car where you would be using more fuel around town than you would be out on the run. So naturally these cars are more efficient when you're going shopping or you know just going from town to town to be honest with you. One of the things I do love about this car is the fact that you've got those different modes and you can set it up manually yourself. So you've got the efficiency mode, the comfort mode, the dynamic mode, and obviously you've got the individual mode. So you can actually set the whole car up according to how you feel and how you like to drive. But all in all, it's not bad for its range. It's not the best on the road, but we can forgive it. Tron GT gets a reasonable warranty. It's three years or 60,000 miles, whichever comes first. You can increase that to four years or 75,000 miles for an extra 1,100 UK pounds. Or if you're intending on keeping the car any longer, there is a five year plan or 90,000 miles, and that will cost you 2,800 UK pounds. The good thing to note is there is an eight year or 100,000 mile battery warranty. That's very important in my opinion. And um, obviously that's something you need to consider when buying any electric car, just double check on that. There are three different service levels. You've got level one, two, and three. And I suggest when you go down to your Audi sales, you know, sales place to get a test drive in one of these cars, speak to your Audi salesperson and they will discuss all the warranties, the levels of the plans, and don't forget those extra packs that you might want to add on. So there you have it, the Audi e-tron GT. What did I think of it? Would I buy it? No brainer, of course I'd buy one if I had the money. What a car. It's probably the most versatile, practical supercar I've ever driven. I, I've got to admit it, I've totally fallen in love with the e-tron GT. I know I'm a big petrol head. If you've watched me before, you know I love my petrol cars, my Ferraris, my Lambos, my muscle cars. All cars, I love them, but I think this has turned me into an electric head. I know 
know, it's scary, isn't it? But this is the future. Sadly, the cars I've just mentioned, they're gonna be dinosaurs in the next 20 to 30 years. It's really sad because I grew up with those cars as a kid. And now kids are gonna grow up aspiring to wanting to own a car like this. And I've gotta say, if I was a kid, I would aspire to wanting to own a car like this. I'd dream I'd put my poster up on the wall of my Audi e-tron GTRS, for example. That would be on my top list up there. Because it really is, the, the thing it does to me, it, it puts a big smile on my face. This car makes me happy. I love being in it. I like driving it. My range anxiety has gone out the window. It's just superb. Brilliant. I'm AJ, and you've been watching me on the Player YouTube channel. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment at your peril. If, you did, if you've got any questions, put them in the comment box, and one of the team or myself will get back to you as soon as possible. If you do subscribe, don't forget, leave that bell sign unchecked, because we do more than one, two videos a week. We're doing, sometimes in the summer, we're doing up to four videos a week. They're not all cars, they're all different things. Interviews, boats, all sorts of stuff, got some great classics as well. Another thing, if you wouldn't mind doing me the biggest favour, give us a thumbs up please, because I don't get a bonus, I don't get paid extra, but what I do get, if you thumbs up, I get a pat on the back from the boss and the sponsor to say, job well done, because if you thumbs up, it means you like what we're doing. And if you like what we're doing as much as I like doing it, then we've got a great relationship going on here. Um, another thing I want to mention, something free for you guys, so don't, don't hang up yet, as they say. Just stay on the line there, because 220 page bookazine for men called The Player, it's all yours. It's got everything in it us guys love. It's got cars like this, it's got boats, it's got holidays, it's got golf, it's got food, it's got jet skis, motorcycles, you name it, it's all there. And it's completely free to you. Not, sadly, the bookazine itself. That's 100 UK pounds each. But the online version, which is absolutely identical, it's yours for nothing. And all you've got to do is head over to www.theplayer.co.uk. It's coming up there now, down the bottom. I'll leave it up there for a few seconds so you can memorize it. If you head up to the top, and at the top you will see it says register. Just go to, into the register bit. There's no data capture, nothing like that. Just put in your name and your email address, and then you can either download that and read it at your leisure, 220 pages of it, or do it online. You can flick across using your finger or a mouse, depends whether you're on a PC or on an iPad or whatever you're on, and it's, it just is so simple to use, and it's really great, I love it. The guys who developed that are simply superb, top-notch guys. Thank you for watching, I will catch you next week with something different. In the meantime, take care.